800 KXIC. Welcome back to the Positively Petland Show. I'm Mark Pitts in for Jerry Lawler. Ron Salzrud is here as well with Petland of Iowa City. Lots of things to uh, get to uh, today, as uh, always. Uh, let's uh, give us information on the breed of the week. Now, is that what we have in the uh, yeah, camp? We actually have Boston Terriers, and I had to caution. We're, we're uh, hesitant to take them out of the, yeah, the, the, the carrier because we're they're gonna active. Let, yeah, Boston Terriers are an awesome pet, an awesome breed. <laughs> uh, they are very active. Um, they are fun to play with and all that kind of stuff. If you have them in a uh, radio studio, they'll unplug things and uh, take us off the air and all that kind of other fun stuff. So that's right bad now, folks. That's bad. So right now they're taking a, a quick little break. Um, all right. The Boston Terrier is truly an all American dog. The Boston Terrier is lively and highly intelligent breed with an excellent disposition. Um, oh, by the way, I'm reading from my own website, PetlandIowaCity.com. Go into All About Breeds, uh, click there. There's nice little vignettes on, I, don't, I haven't even counted how many breeds I've got up there, but it's hundreds of breeds up there that you can research, learn a little bit about, um, and, and so you make a more educated decision. So the, the Boston Terrier is indeed, and we're going to learn more about why it is the all-American dog, conveying an impression of determination, strength, and activity. He is short-headed. I've... Have you ever been described as short? <laughs> is, is my picture next to this description? Uh, it's just as funny. Some of the adjectives or, or descriptions they use. Um, and compactly built. Okay, compactly built. I'm in on that one. I uh, used to be compactly built. Not so much anymore. <laughs> it must be. Okay, so the colors are black, brindle, or seal with white markings often. The history of them. This is where the All-American... Following the Civil War, the Boston Terrier breed was developed in the stables of Boston, Massachusetts. It's like one of the few breeds that were Actually, made. It came from here. the place it sounds like they should come from. <laughs> right. Yeah, that on top of everything, but from America, let alone. Um, here, what do you think the Boston was bred for? You would, It's like uh, it doesn't do this at all uh, anymore. To drink tea. I, uh, oh, that's fun. <laughs> It was bred as a fighting dog, okay. which back then, nice. I know it's not right today, but back then, a lot of dogs were bred. It mm -hmm. must have been like, I don't know, they didn't have TV, so they had that as entertainment. You know, I don't really quite get it, um, but they are, boxers are, bulldogs. That's, I mean, gosh, they went up against bulls. Mm -hmm. And so there was all sorts. That was the culture. Interesting. Well, so while we might not agree with it and everything, we definitely can. I, I'm fascinated with history and just that, oh, that's we we are blessed today with the breed because of it. Um, it, it. OK, so a little further back, an imported dog known as Hooper's Judge. And so it was Robert Hooper that had a dog named Judge and they called it Hooper's Judge. Um, sold to a Boston man in 1870, uh, became the ancestor of almost all true modern Boston Terriers. What do you think the Boston Terrier, they, they say there's a bulldog mix of some kind in there. I, they never distinguish which one it was. What do you think, I, I think primarily, what was the breed that it, it's coming from with another mix of something else? What do you, th what do you think the Boston looks most like? Other breed. Boy, I, I don't know my breed names very well. So the Frenchie looks really similar to a Boston. In fact, some people will mistake Boston's for mm -hmm. Frenchies. And if you know uh, uh, Boston's, then, you know, they go vice versa and everything. So the, the Frenchie. So if you are looking for a Frenchie uh, right now, the nation's going goofy on Frenchies. So the pricing is just crazy high. Get a Boston. You're almost getting the same okay. breed within a Boston Terrier. Um, so, and they do look a little different. I, I'm not denying that. Big one. dog at a budget price. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so the Boston Terrier, uh, the breed is an American creation resulting from a. Oh, here we go. A cross between an English. Ooh, uh, they say English. I'm going to have to correct this because it is a Frenchy bulldog, which 
goes back to the English, so they, that would be a, a true statement. And a white English terrier. That's where the that white English terrier is the other bulldoggy kind of uh, breed that comes into it. In 1991 or 1891, the breed became known as Boston Terriers, taking the name of the city where they originated. The temperament, the Boston, has been nicknamed the American Gentleman because of the dapper appearance. Uh, char characteristically, gentle disposition and suitable as companion and house pet. They require only a moderate amount of exercise and a minimum amount of grooming. The breed is, a, is easy to train and they are easy keepers, preferring to remain by their owner's sides. So yeah, so this is a kind of a small to medium breed. Uh, they kind of top out in the 20s. Um, that it is a shedding dog, but because it's smaller in nature, you don't really notice the shed. You're... Uh, the do what, what's the breed that you have at home? Jo our Josie is a black lab. And so you're going to see it's a shedding dog. Yep. You're going to see a lot more shedding, even though they both shed the same like amount, but it's just a, with a smaller dog, you see less of it. Sure. And so for a lot of people, they go, wow, I, I really like that. It's not a big deal anymore for me when it's a smaller dog. Um, it is an energetic dog. They kind of play down the exercise, which I think long-term exercise yeah they don't play for a long time they kind of do this muscly move stuff and then they get worn out fairly quickly and so i think that's where they get, come up with the moderate exercise um and they can get that out within the house just throwing the ball you know or the fluffy mm -hmm. thing around the house not another dog i'm talking about i'm talking about a toy here just i knew <laughs> you were going off in the wrong direction i was there. kept thinking about i wish i could get away with moderate amount of exercise but. <laughs> and so so they are, are easy there and then uh uh, overall, a fairly easy dog, and especially if you're looking for that medium-ish, little on the smaller side dog, this is going to be great for you. You got boys and young uh, girls at home, they're going to have a blast because this one's going to have that rough and tumble-ness to it and everything, and they'll love playing with it. The Boston Terrier, the breed of the week. The breed of the week. He's Ron Salzrud. I'm Mark Pitts. This is the Positively uh, Petland Show, and uh, uh, yeah, I know you want to talk a little bit uh, flea and tick, and uh, also uh, getting uh, those... Uh, dogs outfitted properly for colder weather yeah so the flea and tick season a lot of people think hey i can start backing off on the flea and tick this is not the time to do it right now so we're in the month of october you know and i nobody says you should back off they all all the data says that you should keep it on all year long mm -hmm. and it's so cheap now it's like there's no reason not to do it you're you're down to ten dollars a dose mm -hmm. if you got got fleas in your house you've got a whole nother you're in thousands of dollars and it's uncomfortable when they're in your house yeah. so ten dollars a month that's a pretty easy fix um keep that going because the two seasons for fleas are spring and fall and the, because we oscillate in that 70 degree range um you know plus or minus 10 degrees mm -hmm, that's sure. prime time for fleas they actually hate the middle of the summer okay so it gets too hot they go dormant mm -hmm. at that point in the winter they also go dormant but i'm going to tell you where uh where your dog is in the middle of winter what temperature is it kind of a trick question uh, follow uh, me <laughs> follow me walk with me right now ask ask Sorry, so I, I was thinking a little bit about winter, the technical aspects of the show, and I just I, I, I honestly the, I didn't I lost track of my yeah, so I think the rest of us so the the, the audience the question issue. was so in the middle of what winter Mark doesn't realize it, <laughs> the show is still going <laughs> in the middle of winter. What primarily is your what temperature does your dog be in? Well, are we talking when he's inside? Yeah, well, inside somewhere right around seventy degrees. Oh. Hey, wait, I've just connected dots. Yes. And so if your dog or cat for that matter, got a little bit of flea infestation, maybe you didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just one or two right at the tail end of the whole season outside and brought them in. Well, now they're on your dog or cat. Um, and now you're backing off on your flea and tick mm -hmm. products. And all of a sudden you've got a flea infestation right. come around January. Mm -hmm. And you're like, where did these come from? That's how that that whole uh, process works. Yes. So you that's why you want to keep it going. Another thing on the flea and tick, if your dog or cat, if you found fleas on them, know that there's now eggs underneath their skin. And so those are going to hatch when the temperature's right, which is year round in your house. Yeah. And so you have to treat uh, nonstop now 
uh, to while those eggs hatch, you want to have protection so that they get killed and all that kind of stuff as they're hatching and everything. So um, that's kind of the extent of what I wanted to go to. If you're in the middle of, oh, we have a flea infestation, we have a problem, uh, know that you need to have that first line of defense, one of those topicals, a good quality one. There's a lot of cheapos out there. If you're paying less than $10 a dose, you probably are using one of the cheaper ones that don't work. The veterinarian will even say the same exact thing. Okay. Um, but if you have, hey, we're noticing some fleas on our cat or dog, go get CapGuard. We have it at our store, Petland, Iowa City. It will kill every walking flea, so not the eggs, larvae, and all that, every walking flea that's on your dog or cat within 30 minutes. They literally, wow. you'll see little dots <clears throat> dropping off of the, mm -hmm. the pet. It's that cool of a product and it's safe for your dog yeah. and cat as well it's not a dangerous little product or anything so make sure you get that um and then okay so now we can talk about winter hey all of our winter stuff is in the store we have all of our jackets sweaters boots slippers uh we bought i think three times the amount of last year that we sold so we are definitely well stocked and I suspect we're going to sell out again this year on our boots. I believe I did that five to might even use 10 times the amount we sold out so quickly and the city sold out mm -hmm. like nobody can get them anywhere wow. and online they sold out. So I'm like, all right, we are not going to have that problem. So I ordered fool me once. Shame on you. Right. So we've really ordered up. So now you right now is your best selection on color, styles, and all that kind of stuff. So get in on it while you can um, and and take advantage of that because before you know it, little sassy, sassy Susie's not gonna want to go outside because it's too cold. Is your dog you're you got a bigger dog? How does a bigger dog deal with this temperature? Like when they when it goes out, does it want to come back in right away? Or nah, it doesn't No, even... she she well, she just likes being outside in general. So yeah. when she gets out there, it's in this little bit of cold. In fact, in fact, uh, uh, as we re record this on Thursday morning, um, when I got up before I came to work, she decided she needed to go out. Usually, she gets out about six thirty, seven o'clock when I when I normally wake up. But doing the morning show, uh, something yeah, for Jerry, yeah. I mean, up at about four thirty, and she wanted to go out, and then then I couldn't find her for a while. It's like, where did you go, dog? Is because it's she dark. Was, it was dark, but uh, she also was like, you know, it's uh, it's nice out here. I mean, because about thirty degrees, and she was in in heaven. So yeah, yeah. So she eventually came back after giving me a little bit of a heart attack for about two minutes because I'm like, I gotta get to work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I gotta go. There on. she is. There she is. So. Um, I have little dogs, and so with little dogs, it's so much. Uh, they are affected by the temperature so much more. So our dogs, this is excellent potty training weather. In the wintertime, they learn potty training. Oh, young yeah. Ones get out quick. there, get your business, get back in. And that's where my dogs are right now in that they're like, get in and get out real quick. <laughs> and so yeah, I let them out and like within three minutes, they're back at the door. And I'm like, you normally take about 10, 15 minutes. And, and it's because they want to get back in. As it gets colder, they're going to say, where's our, our jacket? We need our jacket kind of a thing. So, so, uh, all of that stuff is in our store right now, uh, and take advantage of that. All right. Moving into cat facts. So this, I've got something like 20 different, uh, we did this. Oh, you, you weren't here last week. Last week, uh, we did 20 or so facts about dogs and we had a lot of fun to, with it and just kind of laughing and I didn't know that kind of a thing. So I'm like, okay, let's get back at it. Um, we're going to learn why. I think more of our audience is actually going to be more in tune with the cat side of things. So how many hours of sleep do you think cats get desire? Uh, need? Desire or, or actually, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. 16, 17 hours. You're desire. right on it. 16 to 18 hours per day. Hmm. That's almost on the level of an infant baby. Yeah. They need a little bit more than that mm -hmm. right when they're born. But shortly thereafter, they're down that cats an old you know a like middle-aged cat is still acting like a baby so i just thought that was fun all right calico cats are most always which is already shocking male or female I, i'm gonna i don't know male i don't they're mainly female okay. and for whatever reason that breed just has something against males and so there's not many male calicos out there. Just to, I <laughs> did not know that. Did not know that. I kind of observed it 
and just thought it was, oh, I just keep on getting females, you know, kind of a thing. How, okay, so then and that's why they're going to uh, change the spelling of Calico from C A L I C O to C A L. L Y to tie in. Uh, all right, Cass. that was clever, folks. And it wasn't necessarily that was, it wasn't necessarily funny, but it was clever. It was in there. <laughs> I get geeky too. So, all right, cats can jump approximately how many times their height? And this would be their height as they all have all fours on the ground. Do they get a running start? Is this flat footed? Ooh, interesting. <laughs> I golly, I wonder if they here we would jump higher with a running start. I don't know if they require that. <laughs> So everybody's out there right now getting ready to scare their cat to see how high it is. <laughs> and then measure it. I'm, I'm going to say four times its height. Seven times. Woo! It's crazy. Some hops. That's why they're, uh, we, with our cat up until, you know, the last year or two, he'd get up on the counter, like you blink and he was there. It's just, they can jump so high. There was a, and I forget the breed, but it's, there is a breed that is, semi uh domesticated but it's a very large cat um and so you have to have it on a lead because it's a little bit of a wild child mm -hmm. kind of a thing um i've had one come into our store and i i was like oh wow holy cow and he was cautious with everybody with it he goes yeah come up slowly and all that kind of stuff he goes but you want to see something crazy he goes, how high do you think this cat can jump? <laughs> he went to the highest rack in our store. That cat could touch our ceiling, which are, I don't know, 15 feet mm -hmm. or so. He jumped easily up into our rack system, our hmm. dog food rack system, all the way to the top. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, you have no safe spot spots in your house <laughs> at all. All right. A group of kitten is called a Kindle. I wonder if that's where the Kindle will come, if they I'm... thought of that or anything. And a group of cats is called a cattle. <laughs> clowder. A clowder. Well, clowder. Where did that? You know, I've never heard that one before. The Kindle I've heard before. Uh, we'll take your word for it. All right. Okay. Abraham Lincoln domesticated four cats while in the White House. That kind of tells you a little bit about a different generation. Mm -hmm. We're not really domesticating any cats that I'm aware of. I guess if you yeah, only if the cat lets you, because otherwise the cat's in charge, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, and maybe that's what they're you're doing. not domesticating me. But obviously Abraham wow. Lincoln was uh, was into he was a cat man, you know, so he was all into it. Now let's go to the opposite. I wonder how many how many cats he could hide in his hat, his <laughs> still pipe hat, right? It still function, <laughs> not have a brawl in there. What's a cat fight called? I don't know. All right. Napoleon, Julius Caesar, and Charles. Oh, shoot. We, if it, Okay. So it's the number. It's the Roman numerals. A, it's an X and then an I. Does that mean minus one? That would be 11. Is, the so X is in one. front. Yeah. Plus one. So it's plus one. So it's 11. Oh, yeah. That's an easy way of remembering. <clears throat> I wonder why as a child I could never figure <laughs> that one out. So, so Napoleon, Julius Caesar, and Charles the 11th were known as courageous men but how did they see cats i have no idea i'm kind of leading into that one they were afraid of them <laughs> they were afraid of cats was, yeah. that's the phrase they were scaredy cats they were scaredy cats so they were just scaredy cats they weren't courageous men so that's kind of funny those those big figures of the past were afraid and here caesar julius caesar man that was the era of the cat that that's like when you see the movies and I think the history plays that one out fairly well. Cats were a big deal back mm -hmm. then and all, well, the pyramids and then the, what the Sphinx was kind of a half cat, half something mm -hmm. else or whatever. All right. 10% of the cat's bones. So skeletal bones are where in its tail. <laughs> yeah. It's in the tail. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, well, where else? But that's just a crazy fact. 10% are in the tail. Are you a cat man? I don't know. I don't dislike cats. We, we, don't, don't, we, we don't have any cats at home, no. So anybody that has a cat, I'm always fascinated by the cat, the tail of the cat. It just can flex in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And so that it can because it has so many joints in it. Um, how many vocal sounds can a cat make? Meow, meow. Um, I'll go with nine because I've got nine lives. I don't one hundred. No, that's a lot. That's, that's crazy. A lot. I I actually <laughs> want to hear the tape of me, 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 all me. the sounds. Now, Gilbert over 
the, his life definitely came, that's our cat, um, had a lot of different sounds, everything from, you know, the meow, but he could make, you know, every, and then you, we know about the crying baby sound that they make outside when they're doing their business, you know, yep. they're doing their thing out there and you're like, what's going on? I hear a crying baby. Um, ours did this like screaming old lady yell <laughs> and, and right before it would my fallen and I can't get up. Yeah. <laughs> He'd bat the window so hard that you would think somebody's breaking in mm -hmm. and then yell like an old lady <laughs> and you're laying in bed and you're like goosebumps are like, <laughs> holy cow, what's going on out there? Meow, get off my lawn. Right. Oh, it <laughs> usually was when, uh, when I could catch it, it was just another cat yeah. that was wandering the neighborhood or something <laughs> like that. Uh, just real quick, we're talking with Ron Saul's Ruth, Petland of Iowa City. It's the Positively Petland Show. I'm Mark Pitts in for Jerry Lawler here on 800 KXIC. Got about uh, four or five minutes uh, left here, Ron. So uh, a few more cat facts okay. to kick her and like normal, bat around like a ball. When we started this segment, string. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I have enough, but we're I'm all, I'm not even halfway through. So this is uh, I like that. Uh, oh, here I like this. We can finish it up with this one or this segment. A cat's powerful vision allows them to see light at levels how many times less than what a human can see because we know they can see at night but this kind of puts it to a number i i what what was the the, the so ratio it's a time yeah it's a ratio how many times more you know more can they see he's looking he's trying to 15 look i don't no no i'm i i, I was just trying to make my, sure i, I had my heard the question just, exactly right how you put it i don't know 15 i don't know six times lower okay it, which is, yeah, that's why they can see dogs can do the same. Not, I don't know about six times. I've not ever seen a number put to that one. Um, so somebody, I don't know if they've done the study yet, but six times lower. So that's why when I'm walking around, when Gilbert was ro roaming the house, you'd fall over Gilbert because he's <laughs> coming up to you, not knowing that you can't see him. And then all of a sudden you're that, I think that's where the, the term, I just kicked the cat uh, comes from because you're like, I can't <laughs> see the cat. And so, yes, Gilbert got a couple of boots. So new, unintentionally. new co coming to Petland of Iowa City, night vision goggles. Yeah, <laughs> so you can see where the cats are at night. So that is, uh, we can go into more, but um, rounding out the show is where we want to be right now. Yeah. All right. So we are Petland of Iowa City. This is what we do in the store. <laughs> We're a bunch <laughs> of pet geeks. Uh, we go through and educate our customers. Testing pet theories and all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, fun, scientists go out there. It's a fun place to work. <laughs> uh, and I, uh, Wendy and I do demand our, our uh, employees to work very hard. So you will see them. Boy, they're always, they're cracking the whip and, and, uh, and really, uh, they're usually running to get things done. So uh, we're all about educating our customers on the pets that they have. Uh, so if you, if you don't have a pet, we've got plenty of pets to choose from. So come in and check them out. If you have a pet, come on in. And if you've got, you know, the stumper of a question, how do I do this? How do I do that? Um, ask us. I am amazed of our population. So don't be embarrassed to ask the stupid questions. 40% of our population. Oh, it's, it's easily more than that. <laughs> don't know the main product you need to use if your cat or dog urinates in your house. You know it maybe by our show and sure. stuff, but uh, they don't know that there's this thing called a stain and odor remover, and it has to have the enzyme in it for pets in it, and that removes the permission to pee for your dog or cat in that same spot over and over again. So many people walk in the door and we go, is there anything that you're you know, having difficulty with your cat or your dog? Yeah, it keeps on peeing in the mm -hmm. same spot. Yeah. It never did this, and all of a sudden, it's doing it now. Hey, use this product, and it, it, it's. I Gilbert started doing it. He had an operation, urinated, and then kept on urinating in that area. I cleaned it up uh, after I figured out what was going on, and he went back there, and he was like, "What the heck happened? It's gone." Who He's moved searching. my spot? Yeah, who moved my spot? And then stopped yeah. urinating in our house again. So getting it back to and that. broke into his. Old man, meow. Yeah, <laughs> old uh, man. Yeah, meow, darn it, Ron. <laughs> Let me go. So, uh, so come on in, ask questions, take advantage of our buy ten get one free on all of our dog and cat food. Take advantage of that five dollar nail trim or the free one if you got your pet from us, uh, and all the knowledge that we bring to the table. Pet Land of Iowa City, Ron Salzrud, positively Pet Land. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great right. day. Yeah. Positively, positively Petland show Sunday mornings in the nine o'clock hour on 800 KXIC. Uh -huh.